promotional. I know. You know what? Well, like, it is. You know what? You you said it when we finished it, but it was like, yeah, it's we made a real product. We put out a real product. It's a great. It's a great accomplishment. <laughs> yeah, I love putting out products. I feel like I'm happy when every joke is for sale. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. If you could just yeah. buy all my jokes, that would make me if you happy. Could, yeah. If you could scale them. Yeah, if you could share everything simply with somebody, whether it's like an inexpensive book or a, a you know, a game or something, you know, some greeting card or T-shirt or whatever, yeah. I feel like it should all be available for sale. Yeah, and I feel like your strategy, what you would apply to me with, I'm at a, I'm in the the early stages, is develop the product so then when the audience is there, you already have stuff to sell them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it. But that's just you know. I don't know. It's. It's. I'm glad we did this, and I. And I hope people, you know, play it more than once. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's what. Like I. Th- yeah. Like I based it on a game that I really liked to play. Like yeah. I wanted it to be a game that people wanted to play. Yeah. And it's, uh, and it's fun to play. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I. Yeah. I. I hope. I think people like it. We've get, been getting good feedback. Some we, people, some people seem to like it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. So you uh, just did two festivals. Yeah, that's been a, a bit though. Or been in, been to America. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't been to America in a while. I was in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, yeah. Which is uh, um, a strange town. Yeah. Did I tell you this already about it being empty? Yeah, yeah, I think we have it on my unreleased. Oh. My, my podcast is not released yet, oh. but it's fine. <laughs> tell, tell us about your podcast. What's going on with that? Tell, <clears throat> talk to us about that a little bit. Okay, uh, so uh, it's I'm calling it Half Hearted. Yep. That's what the name of my podcast is. Uh, like the theme of it is going to be like talking to people about like spiritual journeys. Like right. it's going to be like comedy, like talking to people like that. I want that to be like a part of it. Right. I want that that yeah to to talk about people's like spiritual beliefs or people who have been raised in like religious backgrounds and are out of it. Like I've right. just since doing comedy, I've met so many people right. who are like that, and I was just like, I felt like there isn't any. I don't feel like there is a space that talks about that right in the secular world. Right, and then I come in and tell you stories about stealing from the church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so i have i've i've done three and uh and i was gonna anyway this week turned it out turned out to be a little nuts for me because the uh competition and then uh but yeah i want to get a few i want to get five in the bank and then i'm gonna so i have three i gotta get two more i already have guests lined up i just need to get them in the room nice yeah man so but yeah i'm uh i'm excited to start putting out like more reliable content and putting like my myself out there and uh yeah just been busy busy day job busy just day job busy yeah yeah and i got a new video game so oh what's that uh callisto protocol okay is it like call of duty no it's uh have you ever heard of dead space no <sighs> dead space is like one of my favorite games it's is it like story based where you it's have a story to game yeah it's a fir- it's a third person so you can see the character it's not your point of view okay yep yep like first person it's a third person so you see the character uh, so Dead Space was like a gritty sci-fi horror, survival horror okay. kind of game. Okay. Uh, and Callisto Protocol, my understanding is it's like the same people that made that game made Dead Space, but like they made like a new version of it. So Do you I'm, shoot things? Yes. I shoot aliens that are, you go to Callisto, which is uh, a moon of Jupiter. I'm also a space geek. <laughs> right. Me too, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you go to Callisto and there's like a colony and a prison on it and you're like a driver and uh and everything's like yeah the prisoners are transforming into monsters and you've got to f- battle your way out and i'm almost at the end and then can you play online i don't know i haven't tried you okay. just yeah you go through upgrade your weapons and uh it's it's good it's like uh you can't run you just walk like okay. through it and stuff so you have to yeah you got to deal with what comes your way oh I like i'm not i'm not is it? Do you have to like stop and talk to the characters to get your weapons? Or no. You, okay. It's just, no. 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 Ju- it's just live action. Live action. Okay, you okay. you know you when every creature you kill you stomp the body to get you know new weapons or health or something. Okay. 
Okay. Makes real gross sounds. Love it. Yeah. Like my favorite video game of all time is Alien Isolation. It's uh, like the alien from Aliens. Okay. Like the, yeah, yeah. the uh, Sigourney Weaver one. Uh, and so Alien Isolation is like a pure sci-fi survival horror where you're like, you're trapped on the ship with the alien and you need to escape and you cannot fight it. You can only hide. Okay, so you, you're into sci-fi. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Survival horror, yeah. Favorite Star Trek TV series? None. You don't like any of them? No, I don't, I don't like... I never really liked Star Trek. Although, oh. if I had to choose, though, I would say, like, The Next Generation is the one that I watched the most. But that was, like, in the era of cable when they're, like... When I would I would watch it if there was nothing else on. I would right. watch the Star Trek The Next Generation. But, like, I never watched Deep Space Nine. I, I watched some of the movies, like, the newer right. movies. And they right. were fine. Yeah. The first one was pretty good, actually, right? Like, the first Star Trek movie, the J.J. Abrams one, that was, that was good. That was yeah, a good was movie. Right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I uh, I like the sh- I like the TV series is better than than the uh, yeah than the movies. But TNG is good for uh, seeing Will Wheaton's nipples. <laughs> yeah. yeah, those were. Uh... <laughs> Got to. I feel like a prerequisite for like working for Starfleet is also being in shape. <laughs> yeah, to you wear, can't be to, fat. You can't suit. be fat in those suits. Like O'Brien was barely pulling it off. Yeah. Yeah. They probably had a talk. That's why you're, he's like, yeah, we'll stick him in the teleporter room where nobody could see his fat yeah. ass. Stand behind the podium. <laughs> yeah, Sam. I like that they, it's just the things you like think about in the modern world now. It's just like they have the technology to teleport your physical presence from a ship to a planet, uh, but not the technology uh, to have it run itself. They still need a guy who manning is the who, controls, who manning right. the whole the They can controls. tell the computer to do anything. Yeah, they could like... They... Including transfer. They can actually tell the computer. At, 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 yeah. There are points where Picard is just like, computer emergency transport, and it does it. Yeah, and like whenever so... whenever they walk into the teleporter room, like O'Brien's already there. Like, what is he doing... Otherwise, he's just waiting in there for people to teleport. Like, I wonder... Where's this, his lunchbox? Well, where's his lunchbox? But also, like, now I'm, we're getting into the nitty-gritty of, like, how does life work on the Enterprise? <laughs> right? Is there, are there constantly people teleporting on and off the ship? Because I feel like there's got to be people who live on the ship who are totally disconnected. Like, what shit is the captain getting into now? Like, there's, like, the cast of characters whose lives are in, in danger every week. Yeah. And then there's, like, a guy who's, like, who jerks off in the bathroom at the, on the Enterprise. <laughs> Which we there's, also never see. We never see yeah, you never see that guy. Like, well, I think that's probably why they made that Upper Deck. Actually, Upper Decks is funny. Have you seen that one? No. It, they made a cartoon Star Trek show that's, like, a comedy. Oh, okay. It's on I just canceled Crave. Uh, but it's on, it's on, like, HBO, like, those okay, ones. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'll look for that. It's yeah. The, I watched the first season. I thought it was pretty good. Hmm. Okay, I'll try that. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that's like a, the funny concept of like the other people who live on the Enterprise who have no idea what's going on. Did you see the documentary Trekkies? No. Is it good? Oh my god, it's the best. It's like one of those. Um, it's it's kind of like. Not Michael Moore style and like it, like they're running up and attacking these people, but but in that sort of like making the weird look funny yes. in a way that's like not mean to them, but you you do feel sorry for some of these people because yeah. they're so and and they got the girl that played Tasha Yar on Star Trek mm. to interview them, so she they let her into like yeah 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 they let her see stuff they wouldn't sorry let. who was she again she was the the blonde that died the blonde um tasha on star trek next generation the tall blonde in the first se- season she died they I killed think her i remember did she have short hair yeah oh was she the one hair. that boned data yeah yes <laughs> yeah and i think that's why they killed her off You're like this isn't working <laughs> <laughs> that they did that in the first season I, th- I think she was there like the first couple, and, oh, okay. then, and then she had sex with a robot, and then they were like, "This show's gonna stay weird if these two have any kind of interaction in the future." Yeah. So they just, I think, I don't know if that's why, but that would be a logical reason. But that was the person. So they put somebody who was on the show, and they would they gave they gave them everything that they could have wanted, these, like the flat the, earther. The, documentary. Yeah, these guys came. In, they just as soon as they saw it was her. Yeah. Uh, and there was this guy who turned his apartment. In, in London, England, into the starship. And basically, he it was 
it was a replica of a Star Trek set. Every room yeah. in, in his his house was a Star Trek a starship in yes. his apartment. And he spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on this thing. Yeah. And towards the end of it, he started to kind of say, you know, after my wife left and, and you know, like, like basically he started doing this while she was living there. And at some point she was like, I'm out. Maybe he did one room or something and yeah. she was like, okay, that's fine. And then he was like, next room, next room. And then she just was like, she had moved, she, and he just kept going. And then he was like, so I, you know, so then I worked harder to, you know, on this and I got through and it's like, and now it's just like done. Yes. And who you like i'm sure there's some star trek nerds that love to come to his place but like what do you do it's in it's in an apartment building you're yeah. renting this place like yeah you don't own this or do you like i don't know yeah it's I don't know. uh it's and <laughs> i remember the one i don't want to give the whole thing away but there's, there's one interview with the they go to this barbecue and you know that these trekkies go to and they're, and, and they're talking to this guy and he's like uh, yeah, we do this every year, and uh, you know, we we celebrate Gene Roddenberry's birthday, and uh, we get together and we have a barbecue. And uh, last year, a girl came. <laughs> <laughs> that was the highlight. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. And then there was this other woman that that worked. At, she wore her uniform every day, and she identified as commander. Yes. And she. Worked, oh boy. She worked in a print shop, and she had to be uh, addressed as commander. And then she was called to jury duty. Yes. And she showed up in her uniform, and I guess they were like, what the fuck? <laughs> what a great way to not get picked for jury duty. She got picked for jury duty. No! Yeah, yeah she ended up doing it. They was, thought that she'd be impartial. She was, in the, she was in the paper. You know, Basically, they were like, there's nothing weird about her other than she, she's like... Super uh, into jury duty. I identify as commander. Sergeant. I identify as commander. So and they go I, to her work, and yeah. she's like working in this print shop, and everybody calls her commander. Yes. And she's a low level employee. <laughs> she's like the manager goes along with it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're just like whatever. She's just yeah. a really hard worker and what you know what Yeah, they think it's a novelty until they try to fire her and she's like actually <laughs> I hate to pull rank I've, on you. <laughs> I've got records that everybody in this place called me commander for the last seven years. <laughs> this company runs under a military structure. <laughs> That's really funny. That reminds me of uh, that reminds me of the Flat Earther documentary. Have you seen that one? No, but I've heard about it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Because they're like, I'm not like they interview one guy who's like, I'm not some just some loser who lives in his mom's basement, and then they cut to the other guy they're interviewing who lives in his mom's basement. <laughs> not like that guy. Not like that guy. I actually no, I think I did see it. I think I did see it. Yeah. It's yeah. They're it's they're weird. Well, it's just willful ignorance. It's just you can't like, like every pilot's in on this conspiracy theory. Yes, it's just it's it's too. One of my best friends is a pilot. He would he would have totally. He's the kind of guy. He's retired now. He would have totally said to me, "Dude, the Earth is fucking flat, and they're not telling anybody." Like he would have he would have told me. It's also tough because, <laughs> but then I heard is it like it's true that you can't just like go to Antarctica because they say like there's the ice wall, right? Like that's the. The flat earther model, you know what I'm talking about? No. No? Oh, wow. Nice okay. Wall. So, like, the way that they believe how flat earth works is that, like, the earth is a circle, like a flat circle. Oh, yeah. I've okay? seen that, and there's the ice. And then, so, the land mass is in the middle, covered, surrounded by ocean, and then on all the outskirts of it is the ice wall. And so, like, it doesn't help. So, if you want to go to Antarctica, you you can't because you'll disturb the wildlife. It's like it's super protected, right? Okay. Um. So then that just gives like ammunition to the flat earthers because they're like, look, you try to go to the ice wall, they'll shoot you. <laughs> right. So, but why? Like, my big question is like, why? Why are we? Why are we spending all this money to protect this lie that the Earth is round? <laughs> Who's, well, yeah, why would we... Who's why in would charge we, of this budget? Yeah, I don't know what... Well, yeah, well, and what's the purpose of... Why would you want to hide that the Earth is It's flat? mind control, man. But, yeah, I don't I don't know. It's mind control. I was just thinking of another conspiracy, and then it just left my head. I've been doing this new bit. I, maybe you heard me do it, that one about Britney. No. Oh, I was saying how, like, uh, first of all, like, I think... Uh, I think it's a pretty clear 
that freeing Britney was the wrong decision. <laughs> Yeah, free free Britney is not a is not a healthy Britney. like Britney Britney like free Britney is just like getting divorced <laughs> like talking about doing porn just like right. it's you know Britney needs help. Uh, but then I was I was thinking about how like the whole free Britney movement was basically like QAnon for women. <laughs> okay, only like the crazy thing was like they were actually right. <laughs> right. Right, like Britney gets free, and she's just like, "Thanks for picking up on all the clues that I was leaving you in my Instagram videos." Like, been waiting for this to happen. Meanwhile, like men are like, "Yeah, Donald Trump is talking to us on a website, uh, you know, where there's Hitler frogs. Like, that's where the revolution is going to be organized." I like that. I think that's really funny. I love conspiracy theories. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, that's what I was thinking about. I'm still like this. the The aliens thing has still the whole whistleblower. It has get, yielded nothing. Do you think there's aliens here? I'm torn. I'm torn about it because there's a part of me that thinks it's just our luck that we're totally alone. Because that's what I really think people want there to be aliens for. I think people don't like I it, it they want a sense of community? <laughs> yeah, I think it's misery loves company. That's why we want there to be <laughs> aliens. Really? Yeah, I think we want we're hoping that they have the gravity machine that has infinite energy like the aliens will come and they'll give us the technology that solves all our problems. Right. That's what we want. I think that's what like people people want aliens to be free so they don't have to work at IHOP. I think it's going to be more like... Do you ever watch The Twilight Zone? It's on occasion. Uh, there's a Twilight Zone episode called To Serve Man. Okay. And if, um, you, you don't know? So the story goes, uh, the aliens come, and uh, they all have this... Um, all the aliens are walking around with this like Bible style book. Okay. And they're and they're and they're like, hey, you know, we're here. We want to help you. We have technology. We have all this stuff. Okay. You know, we want to share it with you. And uh we would like to bring some of you back to our planet to see what it looks like. Okay. So you know, nominate some people that you think, you know, or whoever wants to come. You know, we have room for five hundred people. Okay. And uh, and while that's going on, we'll talk to your scientists and we'll tell them what we know and we'll, yeah. you know, we'll share all the everything we know. And um, um, you know, we've we've been preparing to come here, and this is you know this is a book that we've all been studying, uh, and it's about you because okay. we know how humans work, and the book is called To Serve Man. Okay. And um, so you know everybody's excited and they're, you know all these people are happy it's all it was old black and white episodes yes okay i've seen them all and um <laughs> basically like they lo- you know they're getting all the people on the ship and all, you know the aliens are and they're, they're these big like weird looking creatures but not scary yeah and um they're you know they're kind of getting everybody onto the onto the spaceship and everybody's you know getting into their quarters and everything seems really cool and while that's going on there's this like group of people that are like we don't think these guys are legit yeah and they're they're trying they had they got a copy of one of these books and they're yes. trying to translate the stuff inside and they're yes. using all this science to translate this alien scripture and uh basically just before the ship takes off the woman who's like trying to figure this language expert yeah like f- cracks the code and she's like oh my god get everybody off the get you know and, and, and they're like what's wrong and she's like the it's a cookbook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, so that's where the Simpsons got it from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's where they got it from. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, to serve man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, it, that's just it, though. It's like we have all the. I feel like we we. I feel like we've talked about this before, but it's like whatever this phenomena is, like this U this UAP stuff, whatever it yeah. is. If it's if it's not humans, like they're clearly not our friends. They're clearly not here to help us. They're not talking to us. They're not announcing themselves. They're not like, they're right. not doing any, they're not working with us. And I ha- I find it, and I find it also very tough to imagine that like aliens come here and then, you know, only choose to meet with like 11 white guys from America. Like, right. yeah, you're like, oh, you're the, you represent the rest of the world. Like I have a feel like I, there's this part, like doesn't, there's a part of all of it that just doesn't seem to jive. But how would they know who to talk to? 
Well, exactly. I mean, if we went to another planet and we landed and there were people, we talked to the first people. Well, yeah, but you would probably, you know, that's why you would probably try to figure it out publicly. Right. Like, who, hi, who, who do right. we talk to, right? Right, right, right. Uh, and yeah, there's a, there's a whole part of it that doesn't seem right. Like, I feel like I'm torn between the fact that like also, because I'm into space stuff, we are not finding anything close to an Earth anywhere like we're finding lots of exoplanets but we're not finding anything close to us i thought we had found some no so all of these headlines that say we found earth-like planet earth-like planet all they it's like it's an embellishment because okay. it just means that they have like one feature right that's like in common we, f- we see water they're in a goldilocks an zone or, yeah or, we yeah. see an atmosphere we see a this or like but the mass is different. It's location from the sun is different. Like there's so many other factors that would make it totally uninhabitable. And what we're based what, on, well, based on what we know, what we've seen so far, because if you think about it, there's, there are creatures living at the deepest parts of the ocean that could not survive anywhere close to the surface, anywhere close to air. You know what I mean? They're so they're they're under, oh well sure oh, they're they're tailored for well well and that's different though too right like we're if they're unintelligent life if there's just animals on other planets like maybe right um but in terms of like an intelligent technology making species like i don't know but do we i mean do we even need that it's just kind of nice to know that there's even some unintelligent life on other planets it means there may be intelligent life on other planets i yeah i mean it's yeah it's i think yeah that's more possible i mean if there's fucking coral somewhere then that's a sign that they're you know a million years from now, there could be some other kinds of life on that planet. Maybe us, if we figure out how to get there. Yeah, Wolf, we're never leaving. You don't think we're going to go to Mars? No. Oh, no, we might get you to Mars. You don't trust Elon? No, 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 we might get to Mars, but we're never leaving our solar system. We might not get past Mars. Like, the, the rest of those journeys are so crazy and perilous, and the radiation is nuts. Like, the radiation on Z- Jupiter is so intense that if the like when they sent out the Voyager satellites, like if it got too close, it, they were worried that it would fry the whole thing. Really, I didn't just know that. just its presence alone, like the, it would, like it could accelerate particles. Really, yeah, that's what they said it could do oh, man. if they got too close to it. I don't know what they did because they also sent Cassini. Was it the Cassini satellite that they sent? But I think they sent that to Saturn. I'm just trying trying to get my satellite straight okay <laughs> and then there was new horizons but i'm pretty sure that's the one that went to pluto uh and ultima Thule, which is in the kuiper belt see super nerd wow you know way more about space than, like, <laughs> than I, I uh know, but I yeah like yeah like you so we were talking about visiting these other planets but it like even in our own solar system they're dangerous like our right. atmosphere protects us yeah like even on mars on mars we will be crazy exposed to radiation right yeah <laughs> i guess we will Right, like the like the reason Mars, and this is what I mean, like when they when scientists say we found like something Earth like, like Mars is Earth like, right? But Mars is just a touch smaller than Earth, and because of that, doesn't have enough mass to retain its own atmosphere, right? And it's slowly dissipating all the time. So it's not a place, like it's so, not a yeah, place like. Elon talking about like using nukes to create an atmosphere, or, like. It's the uh, it it it's a uh, shoot. Like we have uh, the Earth is an active planet. Like we have volcanism. Like like right. it's a dead. Like Mars is dead. Like there's no right. internal right. thing going on. It doesn't have an active core. Right. Um. So it's never going to create an ionosphere, which we have is another thing that's pr- what protects us from the sun. Like Mars doesn't have all the things that Earth has that keeps us alive. So like it's not never going to be a long term solution. I feel like an infant right now with the amount of information you've just dropped on me. Sorry, I, I don't, I don't, don't be sorry. I, I like it. No, no. yeah, I, yeah, Mar- I, I, yeah. I don't like. I don't think like Mars will be cool to visit, but yeah. like long term, we humans will not be able to survive there. I think yeah. like people love to gloss over that, right? Uh, but it'll be a great staging ground to get out to the rest of the solar system. Like especially, I know that uh, like the European space agency has like plans to go out to some of the moons on saturn and jupiter and stuff like that I, i'm excited to see what those like they want to go to europa mm. um europa is the, the ice the ice moon yeah um and i think it has like geysers and stuff like that there, um so yeah there's there's really active moons out there but i don't these ones will 
not have life guaranteed. Right. <laughs> like, right. like people, there's speculation. Oh, under the ice, there could be life. And it's, no, I, I doubt it. I really doubt it. Hmm. I doubt we'll find anything. Okay. Yeah. I'm kind of like, I feel like people say, oh, the universe is so big. So therefore there must be life out there. Like I've heard it said, like the universe is so big that there's another version of you and I having this conversation right now. It's that big. Right. Right. So it basically, it's a but universe. That's the, un so that's the unseeable universe. Right? That's the yeah. unseeable universe, which means if that's the type of universe it is, then cl then there must have been a civilization that sent out self-replicating probes into all of space. Like, there's plenty of time for that to have occurred. And not, when we not through some quantum entanglement entanglement no we don't or... like, we don't see anything well and that's the other but that's the other discussion right for the with the theory. aliens well no it's that aliens aren't actually uh interplanetary they're interdimensional Dimensional. that's yeah. like the right or that it's like us from like another time like it's humans from the future like right there's no there's no through line here this is the thing like i don't see any you talk to people and they're like you just know like people on twitter if you broach skepticism like you just like need to research man and then they'll show you like a youtube video right a powerpoint <laughs> yeah like made. a powerpoint with like crazy pictures in it like that prove nothing that's how we got bro science yeah that's how we got bro science yeah it's like the uh oh what's that what was that conspiracy documentary loose change <laughs> like loose change was like the first like bro science documentary yeah yeah <laughs> But it was convincing. Oh, yeah. I mean, I knew so, like what because I was still going to church at that time. And I knew Christians who were like freaking out right. when they saw that. And then all I had to do was like <laughs> to calm people down was just like because there's this part in that documentary. I don't know. if Did you watch Loose Change? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there's this part in the documentary where they say like, oh, uh, Jesus is the son. Jesus is a son God because Jesus is the son of God. S-O-N. But he's also the sun, S U N. Right. right? And of course. That's how we convince the sun worshipers to worship right. God. Uh, but, uh, but of course, forgetting, of course, that the English language didn't exist till like 1500 years after. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, like, in Loose Change, they're making a point about the fact that, like, there's a correlation between the right. English words, even yeah, yeah, though, yeah. It, like, that made it into the final cut. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like when you see these guys who are like, you know, it, it you know, Jay and Brad came out with Identity War, and if you count the letters in Identity War, yeah. and multiply it by three, you get twenty-seven. And then you, if you right, yeah, you could extrapolate it to like, actually, I did. I, I will remember this. My friend Brad in junior high made a speech where about how he somehow equated uh, Barney the dinosaur to the Antichrist. I love it. <laughs> I don't know how he did it. Right. I could, yeah, I could see people drawing these lines, right? It's like, it, it'd be so funny to just... Yeah, and I mean, uh, like, when, when like it comes that. to the space stuff, like, I'm happy to be corrected. I don't have a degree in it. I'm just, I'm just... Well, you, know, I, you know more I than I listen I to a lot of space podcasts. And I, like, I, <laughs> I watch a lot of space documentaries. Okay. I'm really, it, like, I knew about the James Webb Telescope, like, a counting down to the launch date, waiting yeah. for that to happen. Um, so I'm open to be corrected, but my understanding... And here's the other thing, is, like, you talked talk to astronomers which i want to get on my podcast too as like astronomers like never see anything like the people watching the stars all the time right i don't see anything hmm. it's like why is it it's pilots <laughs> but not astronomers not people watching the stars not watching space right they don't see anything it's people watching the sea yeah people <laughs> yeah watching the sea so maybe yeah. it's maybe it's china maybe it's you know, maybe they have some tech yeah, we don't know about. I don't, like, I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is. But the other, like, there, I know that there are debunking videos of those three New York Times ones. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, uh, like the one where it looks like you're looking at the, sh the pilot is looking at it and the ship is, the UAP is in front of it. And it looks like it's rotating while flying in yeah. midair. But that's because the camera on the jet has its own rotating lens okay so as its lens rotates it creates this impression oh, okay. of the object rotating but it's not okay but did they say it was rotating that's what they were like look it's rotating in midair like that was one of the points that was originally people tried to make anyway the, or like there's the one i think it's but the, did go the guy did the guy who did the testimony you know for congress did he say that it rotated or? i don't recall oh yeah. But he was only I don't yeah, I don't know I don't know if they were seeing it in real time or only through the camera. 
So anyway, there's just I don't think it's a slam dunk. Like people are saying, this guy, this whistleblower, it's finally happening. Blah blah blah. Like I remember seeing, I saw a clip, like a YouTube video of like Art Bell and somebody in the '80s saying that disclosure is right around the corner, and now it's like th- almost forty years later, and you're like, yeah. okay, right? No, maybe they just uh, want to distract us from uh, stealing all our money. All our money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, look over here. Oh, shit, that didn't work. Yeah. Now what? COVID's back. Yeah, I feel like that could be a thing again. We could bring that back. God no. I mean, people will fight back now. Like, <laughs> I'm not gonna take it. I'm not gonna get the vax this time. Right, I'm like, yeah, right, yeah. Everybody, like everybody's like, like all this. the things you did the first time. Like you fooled me once, not this time. Right. This like, no way. Do you get flu shots? I didn't. I typically would not. Right. Um. Like, I hear it was, like, beneficial for, like, children or the elderly to get the flu shot, but I only ever heard of, like, adults getting the flu shot and then getting flu-like symptoms, yeah, <laughs> like, that, immediately yeah, after. Does, yeah, I'm like, then what's the point? And yeah. then, uh, yeah. And I liked COVID. COVID wasn't the worst illness I've ever had. It was the worst I ever had. Was it? Yeah. yeah. One of the worst I ever had. Yeah. No. I had AIDS once, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You have the money to get out of AIDS. I do, yeah, yeah. I can afford to cure AIDS. That's not so. Yeah, life's good. Life's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, this is a conversation killer. Um, but yeah, I, I, uh, I liked COVID for I liked COVID. Not COVID. Being sick with COVID. Yes, but, I just liked COVID. Like the time. Yeah. Yeah. I liked driving in Toronto and there Toron, Toronto. Toronto. I always I, when I travel I tell people Toronto because if you say Toronto they look at you like what what is that? Yeah. Sometimes. Yes. Um and so um you you could drive and it was like the city was empty. Oh yeah. Oh, it was like the twilight zone yeah. ironically enough, yeah. right? Like yeah. you drive through and it was just empty. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember driving through downtown, like trying to buy a kettlebell at the beginning, like knowing like I better, if I need to get exercise equipment now, cause this is going to be, this is going to be rough. Yeah. This yeah. is going to be a little crazy. Yeah. Uh, so your job has, you know, high, high levels of privacy. Yes. Right. So you're kind of, you know, um, you're, you're under that, you know, that high level. So you have to be really careful how you work from home. Yeah, like yeah, the, the, like and I think this, well, I think there were like, I think there were a lot of companies like that though yeah, too. Like, yeah, like, a lot like of you need to you that. they needed to build in VPN. Like yeah, for my place, like a lot of the employees didn't even have laptops. We all just had our own desk at the physical office yeah. with a desktop. Yeah, and some some of them like when you work from home, they want you to put your um, modem in a lockbox. Oh wow! They want you to lock up your laptop every night. They want your um, you can't have your screen facing a window. Really? Yeah, yeah. If wow. you deal, if you deal with, um, you know, like um, some some higher levels of privacy, you're dealing with, you know, like let's say you're a, you're a pharmacy and you've got health records. Yeah. Or you're an insurance fair. company and you have you know people's health information. Um, you know, people's, you, you work for a, a banking institution, you've got people's credit information, yeah. uh, on your screen, somebody could, and, and this is what they say, somebody could fly a drone up behind your window and take snapshots of what's going on on your screen. If they really, if, yeah. if they know who you are and what you do Yeah, and it could be used to steal identity or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, crazier things have happened. Luckily, I don't think I'm a, I'm that important, uh, I've and, always and I don't deal with and luckily the nature of my role doesn't deal with people's personal information. Right. I, I don't deal with I don't deal with that, which is good. I've always I worked deal with from stuff. home. Yes. Always. And I remember a, a few years ago I lived I used to live in the um the Maryland Monroe buildings in Mississauga, you know those curvy buildings yeah. at the, at Oh, did you really? Square one. Yeah. yeah. Um I was on the 42nd floor. How close to the top was that? Uh I think the 48th floor was the top. Okay. So, so it was, pretty close. It was close to the top. Uh, I had a really nice view. I had a beautiful spot there. Um, sort of right after getting divorced, I just yeah. kind of, you know, I'm like, I'm going to get myself a nice place. You yeah, know? yeah. And, um, and uh, quite the uh, quite the premium on those places, you think? Or, or... Uh, 
Yes and no. I mean, I, I would have paid more to live downtown. You yeah, know, okay. On, on, and I've lived on the lakeshore. I've had a, I've had a condo on the lakeshore, and that's, you know, more. Yeah, okay. Um, and this was a bigger place for less money, okay. nicer views, um, you know, sort of, you know, 180-degree view, you know, big big place. And uh, um, I, I – <laughs> Two things I'll tell you about it. Uh, I'll get uh, there's a, se- a secondary story, but where the point I was trying to make is, one winter I was living there and I had Amazon Prime and I was working from home, mm-hmm. and I every morning I would just get up and look out the window, and it was so nasty outside that I never left my apartment. Yeah, for two yeah. weeks. Yeah, I went two weeks without leaving my apartment. Yes, and it was. How only- did you get food? Delivered. Dude, just okay. Everything was delivered. Dude. Gotcha. Yeah. I was a bachelor. Everything was being delivered. It was just like I knew guys like that in university. Yeah. Like they would come to university to residence and not even bring a winter coat. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. they're like, I'm not leaving. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna leave. Yeah. And um, you know, I I had a doorman, and so he would sign for my packages. Yeah. And I tipped him well. You know, so it was just like I didn't have to do anything. Yeah. I didn't have to do anything. Nice. And um, so I'm I can. I can handle a lockdown and be like, no well, problem. that's like some you know? real, like I'm it, a hermit. That, yeah. That's like I'm real introvert intro- shit. Yeah. Like that's real introvert stuff. Yeah. And you can tell, uh, and I didn't put this to that together because I'm hyper extrovert. Yeah. I can tell. Like, like, yeah. Yeah. I know. Because that, like right. your space is so like, cause you see, I don't know. I've seen these on social media, right? How like introverts really decorate their spaces. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, whereas like extroverts, like why I'm not, I like, right. <laughs> I don't have like, my house is very simple. The rest of my house is simple. Yes, yeah, yeah. as you've seen. Yes, this room here is uh, uh, like a, a, a feast for the eyes. Everything outside of this corner, which is what, what we're filming, yes. in, it's a fe- it's a it's it's a feast for the eyes. Yes. So, but I I did that. This office wasn't always like that. I did that for YouTube. Yeah, I decorated that background because I wanted that to be my video background for everything oh, okay. that I do. Um, but I do, de- I do tend to decorate my space, but I, yeah, I'm a super introvert. So I, so I lived there for, I lived there for a couple a few years and there would be times where I just didn't leave the place. Yeah. And I'm, and I, my, one of my, one of my good friends, Mark, he'll, um, we used to share an office space years and years and years ago. And I would go through these phases where I just didn't leave my, my basement, yeah. I didn't leave my house. And he would call me out on it. He would call me up and he would be like, What's up, Howard Hughes? Yeah, yeah. He's like, you got to the point where you're pissing in milk bottles, or yeah. you know. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, I'm almost there. And then he'd be like, what, you know what? You want to go for lunch? And and like, he's good at kind of bringing me out of it. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and 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 it's and it's not a bad place for me. It's yeah, a, it's a creative place for me. Yes. I'm staying home because I'm productive as fuck, yeah. and I'm kind of tapping the the well. And when I'm not. I'm I'm going out for walks. I'm going shopping. I'm going on trips. I'm doing uh, you know. Yeah. I can be an extrovert, but I can also be like, I can be a traveling introvert. Yes. Um. But funny funny story about that <clears throat> that building. Do you know the Do you know about that building at all? No. So it was. I know it was featured heavily in the movie Enemy with Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, was it? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I didn't know that. Um. It's uh, I'll, I'll I'll flash a picture up, but it, it's um, <clears throat> it's riddled with problems. The buildings, suicides, like you, like the number of people that jump off of those balconies is would blow you away. I have seen SWAT teams rappelling down the building across to get into like a man in distress who's like holding a gun on somebody, or it it like the amount of crime that happened. Around those buildings. In that, really? In, in that block. And the funniest part was, um, and I didn't discover this until about two months in, and, and a friend of mine said, uh, oh, that's the hooker building. And I said, what do you mean? He's like, I drop my buddy off all the time. He has a hooker in that building. He just goes in and he goes up to her place. And I was like, the hooker building? And he's like, yeah. And I Okay, and then and then I went home, and then all of the evidence revealed itself to me, and I was like, "How did I not see? This building is filled with whores. There is what it is. <laughs> These two buildings. It's it's like, and I, and I just thought 
there were a lot of single women in my building <laughs> who were extremely f- friendly. Yes. <laughs> and nice to me. Like, so nice to me. You know what I'm going to say, right? Dude, no, no, say it. What? <laughs> it takes a former porn star to not know <laughs> that he's living. In, I'm like, living amongst sex the sex building. workers. Yeah, you're just another day in my like, paradise apartment. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Did you own it or were you subletting? I rented the place. Yeah. Um, and uh, um, there, was, there were so many, like... The signs were so clear afterwards, and I was like, "How? I would, like, I I would find and this was after, but there were other other signs before. I found bras, uh, just over the over the railing in the elevator. Yeah, you know, like some guy just couldn't wait. Yeah, you know. One time I found um, Viagra on the uh, on the carpet of my hallway, <laughs> and one time there was this guy. That I, there, All of this is a bit. Yeah, all of all, this you think like, so yeah. Oh, yeah yeah like keep telling the story not funny by the way just keep yeah, telling, yeah, yeah, just yeah. keep telling the yeah. story um uh one time there was this guy on my floor and he was like you know walking around and he looked really sketchy and then he saw me yeah and it was almost like i was a private detective that his wife hired like he looked at me so scared and he kind of scurried around into the stairwell <laughs> and then and then i and then i went to my apartment and i could see the stairwell door and he kind of just peeked out and then he it's like he was waiting for you to leave he, yeah he quickly scurried to the i knew which which one was the hooker's place yes. like i knew and er, on every floor there had to be at least one to two hookers on every floor of this of both of these buildings and it was why because it was a it was a central location it was near the airport near yeah. transit near workplaces all this kind of stuff high traffic so it's easy to pull off, you know. The doorman yeah. aren't, aren't going to be like strangers coming in and out all the time. Sure, right. Yeah. Well, it's a huge builder. <clears throat> it might builder. as well be a public building. Yeah. So, um, and so then I started to recognize who the Johns were, yeah. who the hookers were. Is this why you still live there? Oh yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I, you I still... lived there for years. For oh, years, yeah. and then <laughs> that's why you don't live there now. Is no, that, no. I was. To- I was. To- I. I was totally happy to live with the hookers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they didn't bother me. The suicides would bother me. <laughs> I never saw a suicide. Yeah. But there was always like, you know, you kind of have these, um, like familiar strangers that you'd see yeah. on the elevator that you'd kind of say hi to. You sure. sort of knew, didn't know their names. And sometimes they would be like, did you hear, you know, someone jumped off. There was two buildings. Uh, yes. So someone jumped off, you know, 50 or 60, you know, so did you hear someone jumped off 60 oh. last night? And you'd be like, oh shit, you know? And, and then one day, a, a friend of mine uh, called me, and he was like, uh, "Turn on CP24 and, ch- and look out your window." I'm like, "What?" And I, so I turn on CP24 and and I look out my window, and I'm watching these the SWAT team rappel down the outside of the building. It was just like every every day, and there was this woman that lived upstairs from me, and she had four bull mastiffs. Oh, and she had this this kid that. Um, one day was just he he had a BB gun and he was shooting his BB gun on the on the balcony at like a target on a chair. Yeah. And then he mistakenly hit the glass and it like shattered, shattered but stayed stayed together. But we could, I, I could I went out on my balcony I could hear it like <laughs> yeah yeah. And then yeah. at some point somebody called security. Yeah. And the guy the, and I'm I'm just out on my balcony listening and she's like lying to the security guard about how it just cracked. It just it just out of nowhere cracked. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, "Well, that's impossible. You need a certain amount of square foot p- pounds per blah blah blah." She yeah. was like, "Nope, it's, it just happened." And and he's like, uh, "Well, who was here?" And she was like, "My son." And and uh he he was like, "This kid, dude, he would he would I'd be I'd be like working at my desk and I'd hear this like clunk on my balcony." Yeah. And I'd go outside and it'd be like a weed grinder. Oh gosh! And then he how old's the then, son? I don't know, like sixteen. And then he oh. knock, knock on my door and be like, "Yo, fam, I got my weed grinder, and I'd fucking have to go get it for him and bring it." You know, Yo, like, fam. Oh, fuck. And, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't care. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whatever. whatever. But uh, a couple times, some a couple times, some good weed dropped down there. And, <laughs> and that was that. So um, <laughs> that's how he became my weed dealer. <laughs> um, but it was it was it was a sketchy building. Sometimes you'd get on and, and it'd just be this these two people making out. Like the guy couldn't stop. He just like met the hooker and just yeah. Couldn't. It was just it was insanity. 
It yeah. was, it was uh, you know, you you fights between the pimps and there was a, this, on my floor. There was a, a a a hooker living on my floor, and her pimp came, and yeah. they were fighting. Yes, and he lost his shit, you know, and he was just like he he went out into the into the um, uh, stairwell, and he was just slamming the door against against like just to just to make noise just to piss her off you know yeah. and he's yelling and he's slamming this door and and uh like i had my buddy on the phone and he's american yeah and i had him on speakerphone and he could hear it and, he, and as soon as he heard him slamming the door he's like are those gunshots <laughs> like, no no dude it's all good it's just canada just the door um and uh it, like every day every day there was like a little something activity would go down you know and and it was just it was it was a crazy place to live that's so funny yeah but the hooker, like I, I you never you guess you think it's like the classy place, right? Like, yeah. But it is huge. So you think I should tell that story? Yeah, that's a bit. Oh yeah, but yeah. We'll just, use, out, we'll just use it on finding social. out your yeah, finding out that your building is like full of like hookers and stuff like that. And like, I was just the, so dumb about. I was so blind. Have, like, remember, every sentence is a setup. So you yeah. have a good story. Like I moved into this like, and it, remember, a good story is always a statement with a but. Right, right. Like I lived in this cool apartment, but, but yeah, yeah, right. That's yeah. the that's like I was telling another comic. She was talking about how she was on a plane, and the guy started like he w- you know you can play your own movie on yeah. the plane now, and he just fast forwards to the sex scene in the movie on the plane, so like everybody can see what you're watching, right? Yeah. And, uh, so she was working in, but like it wasn't quite together yet. But I was just like, no, it's a great basis for a, like a bit because yeah. it's a, it's got I was on it's a normal thing with a butt, right? I was on a plane, but this guy started doing this weird thing. So yeah, it's yeah, right. Tell the and, story, and, and, and there's then like a build... bit of self, there's a bit of self deprecating where I where I like I was too dumb to notice it yes. until someone else told me. Yeah, and that's then funny. and then all the pieces came together. Yeah, and then, and then you telling of... about the pieces, right? Yeah. I found a Viagra, right? Like yeah, yeah. There, and there was another time where. Like, uh, like, yeah, like one of the, one of the, a kid thought it was a candy. So he's just this little toddler with a boner for three days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was a weird building. Yeah, that's it was a weird building. But I but I loved living there because Square One was right across the street. Yeah, I didn't I didn't love living in Toronto. I never loved it for some okay. reason. It's just too packed in for me. The the traffic is a bit much yeah so i could walk to square one you know i could basically do all the shopping i need to do there was a walmart there and you know whatever if i did go out of the house i could get shit delivered it got delivered quickly yeah like amazon same day amazon next day whatever um and it had the most amazing like the balcony Hmm. was i think it was like 1400 square foot balcony like it was just it was just like sprawling wow that's huge massive yeah I, maybe that maybe that's an exaggeration. I have, you know what? Don't quote me on that. I have no idea. It was big, it was big. People yeah. were you know people would be like, "Holy shit, this balcony is like yeah. almost the apartment." Cuz it cuz it cuz it stretched out. Yes. And so the balcony was kind of the biggest widest part yes. of the place and it so and it wrapped the whole like a pie shape. Like Yeah, it was just a way. round piece. If you the way these buildings are designed, the best way to describe it is if you took up can of Pringles and just started turning them all the way up. I, I almost feel like it looks, they, I would describe, or at least one of them, it looks like a straw that's been pinched. Yeah, yeah. That almost looks like a, cer- like a, like they a do cylinder something, with a pinch in the middle. They do something with the way they paint the balconies that throws off the eye. And the, mm. uh, to, to what the, it makes it look more hourglassy than it really is. So when you say full of problems, they weren't, it wasn't architecturally, it was <laughs> human. <laughs> Human problems, um, you know, and and there were and you know elevators didn't work. Parking was always a nightmare because of all the Johns coming and oh, going. Oh, okay. Um, what with the coming and the going? <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was a lot. It was yeah, a lot, especially the coming. Yeah, especially the coming. That's funny. Yeah, I, I remember this was one girl, and like, all all these girls were so nice, and I just remember thinking. Everybody's so nice, you yeah. know, but they were just so friendly to me. Yes. Like maybe they thought I was another John, you know, and maybe they were like, oh, maybe I'll be friendly with this guy. Yeah. And or, but if they see you multiple times. Then they know you're in the building. Yeah. But even then, I think they're always. Maybe they thought you were a prostitute. Maybe they thought I was a male prostitute. Maybe it was a, you know, a professional courtesy. That's right. Uh, uh, that's maybe, maybe that's what it was. Um, uh, I would not be a good <laughs> male whore. Um, <laughs> that said, I am available. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, I will do it, yeah, but it's going to be a disappointment. Is what I'm saying. Um, there won't be a second visit. <laughs> um, and it, and uh, if you want your money back, I'll understand. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it was. It, yeah, it was weird. Hmm. It was a weird building. That's cool. <laughs> um, and somebody told me that Drake lived in the penthouse when, really? when it was that... first built. When yeah, when it was yeah. first built. Uh, lived in the, the tracks. Yeah. So, I'm gonna tell people. Yeah, I they... partied with Drake. <laughs> if they ask. Yeah. If they ask. If you ask me. Um. What else can we talk about? You went to Absolute Comedy. Yeah, I did the competition. Didn't uh, advance, but you know, but you got not... first place two nights in a row. Yeah, I got first oh, place nice. two out of three nights, so, so that's I, something. I'll take it. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, hopefully. Let's just tell that part of the story. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> uh, yeah, hopefully, I can start doing more regular spots there. We'll see. That's how I roll. Highlight reel only. Yeah, that's right. You're not going to hear about the bad night. You'll yeah. Hear about... Well, you might hear about the bad night, but you won't hear about. It. No, that's yeah. not true. I actually do post bombs. Yeah, I don't. I posted that I posted that one video that where you were there where the people where I walked those people yes and I put you in it because you were like did you walk because of pedo clown and she was like yeah <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't that yeah. was uh that was a while ago I was happier about that than I thought I would be yeah <laughs> yeah I was I always thought I'd be upset if I walked people but I was really happy about it yeah and uh, I want to do more of it yeah I like uh sometimes it's like you like a good gasp. Yeah. 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 I don't I, I don't want to offend everyone. No. But I don't mind if I offend someone. Yeah. Well uh, Yeah. That's you gotta have a a hard stand. You gotta you know that's what I noticed about like some like uh a lot of the West Coast comics, they're like more silly. Right. They don't hit as hard. Yeah. You know, and so I I wanna I wanna give it to people a little bit, right? Yeah. yeah. So we should, uh, I know you got to get going. Yeah, let's wrap up. (laughs)